Hello and welcome to part two of this uh, series. Uh, at this point now we're going to show you how to take a photo reference like this one and paint and combine it with the merchant resource texture that we have here uh, and then do some color correction, some lighting and some tone issues and then to uh, so our combined result is one seamless texture um, which combines which joins the two of them together and gives us a final product. <laughs> so we get the general look of this face and we get all those other little details in the you know in the ears and the, the inner mouth and so on and so forth that um, <laughs> that we just don't really have the time to do ourselves and don't want to that's why we use the merchant resource so um, so let's get to it now as mentioned in the previous video we had this uh, we set up a brush tiling and we have a brush image here so if we push the V hotkey we're gonna see that superimposed over all right, and things don't line up perfectly well, but that's okay. We have ways of dealing with that. But what we want to do is we don't want to paint directly on top of this texture. We want to create a layer. Uh, so these are very similar to the layers you'd expect in a program like Photoshop or whatever. Um, so we're going to create one here. And as soon as we create it, the immediately we had this background layer which created that was the previous image. Uh, and now we have a new layer. So if I click on that once and then again, I'm going to call this face okay and this is where we're going to paint that face texture onto it's really important to do this on a separate layer because you have a lot more freedom when it comes to sort of uh, making the adjustments around the the uh, around the edges of where we paint and to do you'll see in a moment so anyway uh, let's just do a quick let's first see paintbrush here we go so let's check all of our options. We want our uh, hidden surface removal to per vertex. Strength, let's put that up to 100%. Okay, all right, everything should be fine. Now we're just gonna do a quick brush stroke and see what happens. Because remember we push the V hotkey and this is what we get. We get this uh, overlay, all right? And this is, so if we painted everything, this is what it'll look like, all right? So I'm gonna do a quick paint stroke here and well, before that, I'm going to undo this, and I'm going to do turn on symmetry. Tool control, mirror and symmetry, use symmetry, okay? Now you see this part is shaded darker. That's because that's the symmetric sets we paint on this side. It goes over there, too. And then we can later turn off symmetry and do some custom uh, asymmetric painting. But for now, let's just keep things in sync by doing it symmetrically. And I'm going to undo this. And I'm going to paint just that bit. I'm deliberately um, skipping the ellipse because uh, I know that the textures don't line up there and I'll have to do an adjustment first. So let's do that. Here we go. So there we go. Now we have this paint, uh, this texture has been transferred over to this side as well with the symmetry. And this here is due to that morphing we did and we'll correct that when we do the asymmetric painting. So don't worry for now. Uh, but you will notice the fact that we have tone differences from um, from here to here and we're also going to address that issue and we're going to get that matching up as closely as we can. So um, so and notice here um, that little lock icon. When I was I, I created a display group uh, to lock the in, the interface geometry so I wouldn't accidentally paint on it. Uh, it's because I want to do the eyes separately and I don't want to affect the teeth and all that at all. Um, but so but I did the lips by accident in the meantime so this will be a good opportunity to show you um, how to deal with that sort of thing. So if I have a selection tool picker, I'm going to pick by polygons and I'm going to select material. Okay. Now if I click on the lips here, uh, I can't click on them because they're locked. That's the whole point. I want to unlock them. I'll go manager, interface geometry, um, visible. Okay. So I click on those. And then I go back to this this display group which I created before. That's the topic of another tutorial: how to make the display groups. Um, but uh, but for here, I want to remove those polygons. So I remove selection from display groups. Okay. And now see if I go there, um, it like nothing. It doesn't show up as a locked icon anymore. So I want to. Well, I'd have to lock it anyway. So I lock it again, and unselect everything. Now if I paint, I can paint over those lips as well. So let's go paint here. And I will notice here if I paint, those textures don't line up. That's why we avoid before. So let me show you how to deal with that. Uh, so we, well, we first we set up this tiling. Um, so we have this here. 
and we might want to come back to this. So before we change this, right, uh, we don't want it to be destructive. Uh, let's go to the manager and we say presets. We have brush tile preset and a create. And I'm going to say now that we created it, it shows up here new brush tile preset. And I'm going to click that twice and I'm going to say face uh, main because in case we decide to make another one. All right. So now at any point, uh, if I choose, if I select on this and I click apply, it'll reload this brush image and it'll set the tiling up exactly as it's seen here. So anyway, I'm going to push the, the shift V hotkey in the V, click move, and then I'm going to click into the viewport and I'm going to move that tiling down so the lips kind of match up. Now let's look at, get, take a closer look here. And you see how even the contour of the lips off a little bit. And I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to say shift V. I'm going to say rotate tilt. So that means it's going to rotate it like in this direction, right? It's going to rotate it as uh, around an axis that's coming out of the screen. And I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to tilt that ever so much, slightly. And I'm going to move it. Well, in this case, when we move it, you don't want to be doing it by depth. You want to do it like that. And now that pretty much matches up, but the lip can be a little bigger, so I'm going to make it bigger size. Let's move it again. And I'm not worried about this side, of course, because I'm right now I'm doing symmetric painting. That's pretty good. And what? Speedle. When I was doing the morphing, I probably should have made her lips a little thinner, but that's okay. That's something you can do on, as a homework project. So anyway, good enough. So I could still use a little more, but there's only so much detail we want to get into here. So now if I want to paint over these lips, I just go like this and voila. And I'll get a little bit down here, a little bit there. And I let go and it goes over to the other side too. Great. Let's take that as far as we can. There we go. So that is the basic procedure for uh, uh, for doing this initial f um, sort of face layer. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to match the tone from here to here. Uh, either way, we either want to bring this up to the tone of that or this down to the tone of this, or uh, a combination of both. And see this darkness here? This is because on the photograph, you just have this natural fall off, this the shadow here, and that's what that is. So we're gonna to wanna to deal with that as well. Um, so let's just get right into that. Let's first start off by uh, doing the easy stuff. Let's cut out those, those darker areas. So paint tools, paint eraser, strength 100%, everything's fine. Okay, let's just kind of erase out these bad parts. Notice we're still on the face layer, so uh, so this overlay that you're seeing with that grid, that's just showing the alpha channel of the layer. It's like that you're because you're painting on that current layer, and when you do this stroke, it's kind of like a quick preview, right? Um, so it's not showing you exactly what the combined uh, texture is going to look like. It's just showing you what the current layer is going to look like, and when you release the mouse, then you see everything. So I'm going to do that and do that, and I'm going to. And the rest of it, I'm going to use the lighting adjustments for. But before I do the lighting adjustments, I know I'm going to do a tone adjustment. Now, with a few different options at our disposal for doing this. First off, it's extremely important. This part, I made this mistake a lot myself. See this brush image? A lot of paintbrushes are affected by this, right? So um, if, if you, for example, do light and darkness, uh, and you have this on, it's going to vary that light and darkness based on the intensity that you see here, right? Because there's times when you that is the effect that you want. But in this case, we don't. So I'm going to hold the Alt key and I click it to clear, make it go away. Okay. Now that, that I spent a lot of time making mistakes because of that, so uh, make sure you don't do that either. Clear that that brush image. Okay. Now. Uh, the first one, this is a brand new feature, so if you haven't updated the software, update it immediately uh, because we, uh, if you're not on um, version uh, 1.0.2.10, then you won't have the feature I'm about to show you. So make sure you update to the latest version. 
uh, this automatic updates in case you don't know check help check for updates it'll do an automatic updater it'll do everything in the background restart the program it's all good so uh, paint tools uh, color picker first off um, before I show you actually how to use it let me show you where it is color adjustment brush tone drift okay so what this is going to do is that you're going to take uh, in this case we want to say let's just it's going to be easier to make this tone match this tone because we have the whole face and body and everything else. There will be times when you want to do the opposite. You might say, well, I don't want this underlying tone to be that red. I want it to have a bit more of this yellowish hue or something. So you might do the opposite. But in this case, we're just going to do the simple way and we're going to go, we're going to take this tone and make it approximately this tone. Now, you can just do a color rise. And so let's just do that first. Let's show you the simplest way to do it. Um, but it's 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 good, but it's it's simplistic. So you you don't want to know the difference between them and why you're doing it. So I I, I select this. We use the color picker. I select this like a like a good um, color in this part. Now if I go to color adjustment brush and I say colorize, and I'm on the face layer, right? And if you see, it's going to basically make everything that same tone, right? I'll just do everything just for the and that's a little extreme, right? And then might just say, okay, well, I can do that, but let's say start off at 50% and then work your way up. And then maybe not everything, maybe avoid the makeup around the eye and so on and so forth. And this is good. This can be used for a good number of situations. But the situation is not good for is when you have a variety of tone in here where you don't want it all to become the same. You just want it to drift. You want everything to kind of relatively shift itself to over here okay so what we're going to do for that is uh, we're going to use this new feature called the tone drift so what it does is this is like your starting color so we, piss, we sample in a, you know a typical color over here right and try not to get one that's too light or too dark right try to get one right in the middle and then this is going to be the col typical color over here that we want it to drift towards and so let's go to the color picker Holding the Alt key will choose the secondary color. So let's just see Alt key. See that's Alt key and click, right? We'll make that. We'll make that secondary color. So I'm going to take a pick, pick a typical color in here, and then without the Alt key, I'm going to take a pick a typical color. Pick a typical color over here. Now, let's do this color adjustment brush and tone drift. And let's start off with 100%, just so you can see the full effect and then we'll we'll lower that strength and do it in a few different steps it's always better to do it in a few weaker steps and build up but anyway so now if i paint over this first off you can't see the effect until it's done um, but now let's go here and let go and you see now all that all these tones drifted into this direction right and they're lighter of course but they're, they're pretty much the same tone and you notice the uh the yellow around the eye makeup like that that didn't just turn to this color, it shifted. Let's undo, right, and do that again. Here we go. Right, so it shifts the tone um, from this color to this color-ish. Like it's it's a relative thing. It's right. So if you have if you have blue in here, let's just show you that. Just uh, let's get a paintbrush and let's make this blue. Okay, and make this. All right, I'm gonna paint some blue. Okay, now I'm going to color picker. This is my destination color. Color adjustment brush, tone drift. And let's make this ten again. And now, if I do this whole thing again, it's not gonna make that blue the skin color. It's just a slightly shifted version of blue. Okay, you see that? That is why it's a really extreme example, but just say you had like a little like bluish veins under the eyes or you had some other different detail. Um, and if you just did a color rise, that would all just end up looking the same. But um, those tones would get lost. But by doing the, the drift, those tones are not lost, they're preserved. All right, so anyway, let's just do this one more time. But I'm going to do this with a strength of 50% and do it over a few strokes. Okay, so I'm going to. Maybe in the middle, I want to keep a little bit of that interesting tone, right? So I did it all there, and I'm just going to do more on the edges here. 
There we go. And you know what? That's actually see that's even a little too much there because it can overdrift. That's another thing when you do in this. You're basically representing a motion from uh, from this color to that color, and you can overdo it with too many strokes. So I'm going to just do that weaker around the edges. And let's take a look at that. Let's just see how that looks here. That's not so bad. Actually, I like that. And sometimes with the, with makeup and so on and so forth, the tone of the front of the face is different than over here because you just have different makeup and so on and so forth. And what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to bring some of this tone and bring it back over to the base layer. So let's do that now. I'm actually liking how this is turning out. This is good. So uh, I'm going to go to the background layer now. So now when I paint, I'm going to be painting on this stuff and not on this stuff, okay? And let us... Uh, I'm going to, because those tones have changed, I want to resample them. So color picker again. And now this is going to be my destination. This is the color I want, all right? Here, so I, I, I click without holding Alt. And this is what I want to start off with. So I want these colors to drift over to there. See, I'm, it's a two-step process. I drift these colors to here, and then I drift these to back here, and I get something in between, right? So let's take a look at this now. Color adjustment brush, tone drift. And let's do the 50% just for now on the background, right? So now if I do here, something like this, right? Now, see, it's, it's, it's subtle and sweet, but I'm going to do it again. All right, so now these, these tones here are coming up to speed with that one, but I'm going to do it even weaker. It's always better to do it multi-passes. that and that. You notice at this point so that overdid it a bit too much. So I undo that. But this now is just a lightness issue. And so this tone for for our purposes, for the purposes of this tutorial, that's we're gonna call that good enough. Okay? So now let's just do the lightness. So I'm going to do the light adjustment brush, lightness up and down. This is a pretty strong effect, so I'm gonna put that at 5%. I don't want that, that too much at one time. I'm on the background, so this part of the background, the, the, the underlying texture, I want to bring it up to the lightness of this. So I'm going to go like that. I'm going to do it again. Voila. And now if you see the little stripe of darkness there, I believe that's on the face, on the top layer. So I'm going to hold the Alt key while using the same brush. So this lightness up, down, right? Anything that says up, down, uh, light and darken, dodge, burn. If you hold the Alt key, you do the second one. And if you don't hold the Alt key and you just click and drag, you do the first one. Okay? So I want to, what did I say? I want to lighten that little strip here. It's so weak. And it's going to be just on the face. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. And I don't want it to go down that far. Actually, that I want to darken. So I'm going to hold Alt and darken that a bit. One click. There we go. Okay. So there it is. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to stop the video now and I'm going to do another part. Uh, it's just not so each video isn't too long. So that's part two. And so if we see here, we've combined those two textures quite reasonably well given the small amount of time we've just invested in it. This part here we're going to touch up later because that's the asymmetric stretching that happens from the morph. Um, so we're going to fix that up. Uh, but we're doing pretty good so far. So uh, stay tuned for the next video and we're going to show you how to, uh, to touch up that opposite side and uh, get the asymmetric action happening. All right.